Hi guys, Neil Tappen here from Golf Monthly and welcome to this video in which we're taking a look at the eight biggest equipment mistakes that golfers make. Now if you're kidding yourself out with golf clubs from driver through to putter, there are a whole host of pitfalls and mistakes that you can make that you really need to avoid if you want to get it right. And in this video we wanted to highlight what some of those mistakes were and to arm you with the best knowledge possible to make sure that you end up with the right 14 clubs for your golf game. Guys, if you're new to the Golf Monthly channel, please do hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss any of our videos. Uh, if you like what you're watching, uh, give us a like. But let's start with the eight biggest equipment mistakes, starting with Fairway Woods. There's no two ways about it. Fairway Woods are probably the hardest golf clubs in the bag to get right. You need to be able to use them off the tee, but you also need to be able to use them off the deck. And, you know, it's a long shaft, it's a relatively small head with the ball sitting on the ground. It's, it can be hard to strike your Fairway Woods consistently well. And that's why players often struggle to find Fairway Woods that they really like. You'll often find out on tour that if a player finds Fairway Woods that they really get on with, they are the last golf clubs to change. They might change driver, but they might not change Fairway Woods in a hurry. Now the question I have for you is, if you put your three wood in your hands and you had a shot of around about 200 yards into a long par four, it was off a tight lie and there was some trouble up by the green, would you feel confident pulling that three wood and using it? If the answer to that question is no, then there's every chance that your fairway woods might just be another piece of bag furniture. So they look pretty in the bag, but they never actually come out to play. Now that's a mistake that you really need to rectify. Uh, my advice would be think about adding some loft to your fairway woods. It's something that I did in my game. I added loft to my three wood. It plays now more like probably more like a five wood actually. Uh, so it doesn't go quite so far. And there is a bit of a gap between my first fairway wood and my driver. However, it's a golf club that I feel really comfortable using. I don't have to swing it quite so hard to get the ball up and away. And if you are someone who struggles with your fairway woods, it's something worth considering. Beyond that, what you should definitely do is speak to your local PGA professional, go for a fitting, but do so telling the, the fitter, you really struggle with your fairway woods and you want something that you can rely on and that you can hit consistently. If you get it right, it's one of those mistakes you'll probably never make again. Now, the next one on the list to talk about relates to these things, your grips. Um, now, I don't want to sound like your dad, but your grips are your only point of contact with the golf club and if your grips become worn or they become slippery then your grip tension will automatically become tight and that's a problem because you want your forearms you want your grip pressure to be as light as possible so that your arms effectively swing like um, with complete freedom and fluidity through the golf swing as soon as your grip pressure tightens you lose that fluidity and actually you'll lose power as a result now a couple of things to look out for this is an old grip that I've had in the bag for a while and you can see it's starting to get a little bit worn here. It's also lost a bit of its tackiness. This will have to change soon. Now, if it didn't have this worn bit, if it was just a little bit slippery, I'd give this a good wash and a good scrub and I might be able to uh, get a bit more performance out of it. So that's worth doing. If, if your grips are feeling a little bit old, give them a clean first. If having given them a clean, it's still not right, then change them. Get some new grips on the golf clubs and it will make your golf clubs feel like new. Okay, so it probably comes as no surprise to hear that in 2019, drivers are getting more expensive. It's something that we've noticed as a recent trend. The driver I've got in my hands here, this is the TaylorMade M5. This has a recommended retail price of, take a deep breath, £499. Uh, it's the same with Titleist, it's the same with Callaway. It's a significant investment in your game and even just one look at the sole of the driver does reveal to you the different options that are available to you. Uh, there's a lot of engineering that's gone into these clubs so they do come with a fairly hefty price tag and again looking at that engineering it really makes in my mind no sense to buy one of these new generation drivers without going through a full and thorough custom fitting and that means hitting shots on a launch monitor. To buy one of these without going through through that process is a dangerous business and you might walk away with something that you paid a lot of money for that isn't quite right for your game. Now when you go through that process of fitting for a new driver also it's important that your fitter understands the sort of shots you want to hit on the golf course. If the shot that you like to hit when you're under pressure is a little cut. You need to be able to hit that. There's no point in walking away with a driver that doesn't allow you to hit the most important shot you ever need to hit. So make sure that your fitter knows that if you're going through the process. 
Now, the last thing I'll say is that if you are interested in a new driver, you might think that in, in order to save a few quid, you go for a previous generation driver. It will certainly save you money. Just be slightly warned that the availability on the component parts might not be the same as the first time around. So you might not have as many head options to choose from or shaft options, and you might not be able to go for a fitting. It depends. If you search out for it, you might well be able to find that you are able to tick all of those boxes. If you're not, you might have to go with one of the new generation drivers, which are more expensive. And if you do that, make sure you go for a full and thorough custom fitting. Okay, so the next point on the list, and it relates to the point before, is do not go for a driver that doesn't spin enough. Okay, be warned, spin is your friend, even with a driver. Uh, there can be a temptation during a fitting to fit yourself or to get fitted for your very best swing, your fastest swing, the swing that delivers the best launch conditions. And that means often a low spin setup, but a low spin setup might not be quite right for your average to below average shots. And you need a driver that's gonna perform on every single swing that you make. So a setup like this with the weights really a long way forward. This really is for the very fastest swingers in the world, those people that are able to middle the, the driver every single time. For most of us, you'll need something with the weight further back in the head to give you as much forgiveness as possible to keep those spin numbers up. Because I said at the start, don't forget, spin is your friend. Okay, so there is obviously a very big difference between these two putters. Uh, obviously one's a blade and one's a mallet, but there's much more to it than that. One of these putters is designed for players with a straight back and through stroke. The other one is designed for players uh, with an arc to their stroke. And the way that you can tell is by balancing them on your finger. So you let go of the shaft, you find the balance point, you let go of the shaft, and you find the point at which the club just balances nicely. And you'll notice that the ping in my right hand has more of a toe hang to it than the Scotty Cameron in my left hand, which means that the ping is designed for players with an arc and the Scotty Cameron is designed for those players with a straight back and through stroke. It's really important that you marry up your putter with your stroke. That's how you find consistency on the green. There really is, is no excuse for have, having a mismatch in that regard you, because you can find mallets that are designed for players with an arc and you can find uh, bladed putters for those with straight back and through strokes. Do a little bit of homework, speak to your pro, and make sure that you marry up your stroke with your putter and you may just hold a few more putts. Okay, so the next on my list relates to these guys, your wedges, and in particular, the grind of your wedges. Now, when we talk about grinds, what we're really talking about is the sole design. And when it comes to wedges, the sole design really is a key factor. It's a key factor in determining how good you are at striking the ball around the greens. Now, you might not think it will make a huge difference, but I can say from my experience, it really does. And that's why when you look at the manufacturers like Titleist, like Bob Vokey, they offer so many different grind options in their wedges because they know that every golfer out there has a slightly different technique. My technique will be different to yours and therefore you will need a slightly different wedge setup to the one that I've gone for. Now I appreciate that not everybody watching this will want to go for a wedge fitting. We would advise that you do. It can be really incredibly helpful but if you don't want to go for a wedge fitting, instead go into the pro shop and ask to take out a few different wedges but take out wedges with different grinds you will notice that one wedge will just seem to click with your technique a little bit better than the others, and that's the one to go for because that's the wedge that gets through the turf a little bit better when you chip, and that's the wedge that will get through the sand a little bit better when you hit bunker shots. It can make a big difference to your game. So um, in 2019, make sure that if you are buying new wedges, find the right grind for your game, and it could make a huge difference. Is that what the face of your wedge looks like? If so, clean it. Don't be lazy, clean the face of your wedge, otherwise you will be throwing away really important spin control.
Okay, so that brings me on to number one on my list, and this relates to iron lofts. And it's something that everyone out there will need to consider. You'll either need to consider it today or in the near future, whenever you come to upgrading your irons. Now, it'll probably come as no surprise to you to hear that manufacturers are making the lofts of their irons stronger and stronger and stronger in modern day iron sets. Um, so what was a seven iron in years gone by is no longer a seven iron in terms of its loft. Uh, that's been cranked, so it's flying a little bit further. Now, the manufacturers are able to do that because they're able to build more launch into their irons. So the ball still flies like a seven iron, it's just going further. And now, just to give you an idea, in TaylorMade's uh, iron range, you've got two different models. So you've got the P730, which is a very traditional, uh, sort of almost like a blade that you'll find out on tour, and the M6, which sits at the other end of the spectrum, really forgiving, really long. The 5 iron in the P730 comes in with a loft of 27 degrees, and the 5 iron in the M6 comes in with a loft of 21 degrees. Now, that will mean that the M6 plays an awful lot longer than the P730. That's fine, not a problem. However, there will come a point in every amateur's set where you start getting diminishing returns in terms of distance. So with that loft getting lower and lower and lower, the further you go up the bag, you might well reach a point where your four iron doesn't go as far as your five iron. And this is where you'll need to switch up and either think about putting a, a hybrid into play or a different kind of iron at the top end of the bag that is going to give you that distance gap that you really need. It's something that you'll need to consider and it's well worth thinking about as you go through a fitting. So these iron sets, they don't come cheap. If you are going to get them, go through a proper custom fitting. And part of that fitting process should be to think about the gapping at the top end of the set. It might well be that you don't need to carry a four iron or a five iron or even a six iron. And instead you have hybrids instead that will help you bridge that gap to your fairway woods. Failure to do so may well end up in having uh, two irons at the top end of the bag that go exactly the same distance. Guys, there you have it. That's our eight biggest equipment mistakes. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed that video. Please do hit the like button if you have. Uh, please also leave comments below. Is there anything that we've missed out? Is there anything that you'd like clarification on? Leave comments or questions below. We'll get back to as many of you as we possibly can. But for now, from West Hill, it's goodbye.